What's really happening when you use a vaporizer? Are there like little guys in there creating the vapor? Is it some sort of miniature black hole? Or is it just straight up magic? It's none of those things, by the way. It's not just about the device. It's about the smart design meeting science to help you stretch every gram further. Most people are gonna miss the small details that help you turn waste into savings. But that's why we're here. At T-Vape, we've spent over a decade using, testing, and engineering vapor vaporizers. Trends come and go, but one question never changes. How do you get the most out of your sessions without overspending? In this video, we're going to break down the science that makes vaporizing inherently more efficient and how to sift through the hundreds of vaporizers in order to find the most efficient one. Are you ready to see how vaporizers outsmart old school methods? Well, we're gonna start with the science of heat. To understand how different heating methods work, let's pull back the curtain on thermodynamics. That's right, I, Nick Beaton, local moron, am gonna talk about thermodynamics, the science of energy and heat. Think of it like this, vaporizers are essentially tiny labs that use controlled heat to turn your herbs into vapor, not waste. But to see why this matters, we must compare it to the alternative smoking. When you light up with a flame, you're not just heating your material, you're burning it. Combustion is like setting your herbs on fire, triggering a chemical frenzy that actually destroys 30% of the material that you want. It's not just wasteful, it's counterproductive. It's, dare I say, stupid. Well, I dared. Come at me. Those flames scorch away delicate compounds while also churning out harmful byproducts like tar and carbon monoxide. What's left? A pile of ash and smoke where half your material literally goes up in flames. Vaporization, by contrast, operates on the principles of controlled thermodynamics. By heating the plant material to precise temperatures, typically between 100 and 230 degrees Celsius, vaporizers target the desirable compounds without reaching combustion. This method preserves the integrity of your active ingredients, allowing them to transform into an inhalable vapor without burning them away. The result? greater efficiency. By avoiding combustion, vaporizers reduce waste and extend the life of your material. Less product is needed to achieve the same effects, translating directly into long-term savings. In thermodynamic terms, it's the difference between wasted energy in the form of excess heat and harnessing that energy for precise, productive work. We've covered conduction, convection, and hybrid heating in a different video, but here's the TLDR. All vaporizers avoid combustion, but they just do so differently. Conduction heating is like cooking on a griddle. Your herb touches the hot surface, heating it directly and quickly. It's fast, but if you're not careful, some parts can get overcooked while other parts stay raw. The fix? A quick stir mid-session to help redistribute the heat. Think of it like flipping a pancake. Golden brown on both sides and no burnt edges, which is not how I make pancakes. I make pancakes by putting the batter in the pan, flipping it too soon, it becomes a disgusting mess, then I eat half an overcooked, half a raw pancake. It's all I deserve. Convection heating is the sous chef of the vaping world. Hot air circulates around the herb, heating it evenly without direct contact. This method is more like using an air fryer. Slower to start, but you get perfect crispy results every time. No stirring required, just consistent vapor. Hybrid heating combines the best of both worlds. A bit of convection for speed, a bit of conduction for evenness. It's like the Swiss army knife of vaporizers. Extremely versatile and hard to mess up. Unless you're like Craig, our cameraman, uh, he messes just about everything up. This is our third time filming this video because Craig, the cameraman, forgot to turn the camera on. No matter the method, the goal is the same. Extract every last drop of value from your herbs. It's not about having the fanciest settings. It's about how you use them. Whether your vaporizer uses exact temperature, voltage settings, or simple presets, the secret to savings lies in one idea adjustability. You can also save a bunch of money if you're just the one guy in your friend group who never shows up with any herb. But that would make you a dick. Here's the truth. Any control over heat intensity allows you to tailor your sessions to waste less and reuse more. Start with lower settings to lightly activate your material, preserving the majority for later. Return to the same batch later, turn up the heat a step, 
and get stronger effect. Repeat until fully spent. This isn't rocket science, it's resourcefulness. Even basic devices with voltage settings follow this principle. Lower voltage, less heat, lighter sessions. Higher voltage settings, more heat, more intensity. Don't max it out on the first round. Treat your material like a multi-day ingredient, not a single-use item. Your herb is going to be great when you go back to it. When choosing a vaporizer, prioritize two things if you want max control. Adjustable output. Can you tweak the power? Even low, medium, and high works. Consistency. Does it hold your chosen setting or does it spike and crash? Goal isn't perfection. It's progress. Every notch of control you have, no matter how small, is just another tool to stretch your stash even further. Because saving money isn't about the device's specs, it's how you wield them. Here's something smoking can't do. Give your herb a second life. When you vape, especially at lower settings, you're not burning through your material you're preserving it. That lightly vaped bud still has value. Save it and you've got options. Reuse it later. Crank up the heat in a future session. The flavor might be milder, but the effects are still there. Repurpose it. Use it for edibles, oil, or other creation. The initial heating has already activated the compound, so it's ready to work without extra prep. Compare this to smoking when your herb turns to ash in one go. No second chances, no replay. Vaping's efficiency isn't just about using less, it's about using twice. Let's cut to the chase. Vaporizers will save you money, but only if you treat them right. So pretty much the opposite of your girlfriend. Think of your device like a car. Skip oil changes and eventually it's going to cost you more than it's worth. A dirty vaporizer works harder to do less, wasting heat and material. Residue clogs airflow, uneven heating burns material, and eventually you're using twice as much to get half the effect. Compare this to smoking. Sure, bongs and pipes don't need as much upkeep, but they don't last that long either. Resin builds up, clogging chambers and trapping usable material in a sticky grave which is coincidentally how my uncle wanted to be buried. We should have checked in on him more. Over time, that gunk adds up, both in wasted product and wasted cash. Smoking devices demand waste. Vaporizers reward care. A quick brush after each session keeps chambers clean, and a monthly deep clean with rubbing alcohol resets performance. Five minutes of maintenance today means months of peak performance in the future. Now, let's talk cost. Yes, vaporizers do have an upfront cost, but smoking's cheap facade crumbles pretty fast. Combustion destroys up to 30% of your material instantly. Vaporizers reclaim that loss and then some. When you add in reusable AVB, the math flips entirely. For example, spend $200 on a vaporizer and it pays for itself within a year by stretching your stash. Five years later, that device could save you thousands compared to smoking. Meanwhile, smoking's hidden costs pile up. Lighters, papers, replacing broken pipes, showing up to work, smelling like smoke, and then you get fired and you go home and you tell your wife and she's like, what happened? And you're like, downsizing. And she's like, yeah, right, you were high at work again. And you're like, oh my God, will you give me a break already? And she's like, well, that's just perfect. Jordan starts private school next year. And you're like, I didn't realize I married your mother. And then you gotta sleep on the couch for a week. Can't put a price tag on that. Oh, and the constant repurchasing of material you've literally burned away. Bottom line, vaporizers aren't an expense. You gotta stop looking at them that way. They're an investment. Treat them well and they'll return the favor tenfold. Skip maintenance and you're just trading one waste for another. Choice is yours. Keep burning cash or turn every gram into a long-term asset. So, do vaporizers actually save money? Well, if they didn't, this video would be a waste of time. Let's cut through the smoke. They're not magic, but they're pretty damn close. By slashing waste, stretching every session, and turning leftovers into second chances. Something we all deserve, Dad. They flip the script on what value really means. Smoking burns cash, vaporizing builds it. But here's what I wanna know. 
What's holding you back? Is it the upfront cost, the fear of a learning curve, or just an old habit of this is how I've always done it? Drop a comment below and let us know what your biggest hurdle is. Your struggles could help inspire our next video and your wins might inspire someone else. If this video helped, do me a solid. Hit like, subscribe, and join the conversation. Every click helps us keep making content that turns your questions into answers and your habits into savings. Until next time, as always, Keep vaping.